This is Fox Solo. 3000. Welcome. I see this picture, I cringe. I hear about author, I really don't give a fuck. I don't give a damn, and now I don't give a damn when I hear about Mandela. It seems like the whole thing was a deep sham. And I'm really disappointed. But it does seem like part of the timeline and part of the journey, but the disappointment is too. Can I ask you directly, do you have any information that might implicate President Zuma in any acts of corruption? That's a direct question to you. Now look at this twat. This is Pravin Gordon. What a twat. What an imbecile. He's left so many townships existing in South Africa and he's been the man for so long. What a dig. What a freaking imbecile. Impotent imbecile. I can't believe this guy. He's now being asked. Listen to his question. Can I ask you directly? Do you have any information that might implicate President Zuma in any acts of corruption? That's a direct question to you. No, I don't have any personal information, but as I said... I mean, this is a twat for real. He has no personal information against an actual president who's about to be off-seated because of his spy allegations. Crazy stuff. And I mean, look at this. This is Tabum Beke's book of joint, the dialogue. They've got Derek Hanukkah as a damn spy right there. You know, and these things have been continued. I mean, look at that. It's him and his wife. These guys are spies. African military was still supplying Renamo with weapons. The two spies in questions with Derek Hanukkah and his wife. What the fuck? Now look at this, look at this mess right here. In late 1992, the ruling National Party and the ANC were trying to break a deadlock that had stalled negotiations for two years. The National Party was insisting on compulsory power sharing that would give the white minority blocking powers at every level of government. We're supposed to be negotiating for the land of our country and allowing white motherfuckers who've been controlling everything. These guys are Satanists, real witches. And look at them, look at them, these guys sitting. Nobody knows that they're doing this. They're basically allowing these guys to rape their country. They're acting like they're reading. This guy ends up to be the president's. The ANC demanded straightforward majority rule. While the white extremists boycotted the negotiations, the two major players got together. We started having what we call boss barrads, that is, talks away in the bush. What a fucking trick is that? This is these two guys, the chief negotiator and the president, Mandela and another president, Ramaphosa. These guys are having talks in the bush. We know that these guys were meeting in the bush to organize fucking killings of real leaders. We know that. Read your books. Read The Tall Assassin. The killer who killed Biko and all of them, his kids are getting it. And these guys are owning big companies right now. Their families, everything is on top of the world. And they've been lying. They say we, like they told everybody, like they went through, like the Afrikaners, to do a referendum with everybody. If they want South Africa to have like uh, an election, you know, they didn't come to anybody. They just did this thing themselves. Now they're doing it. Listen to this. We started having we, what we call boss barrads, that is, talks away in the bush between the ANC and the government to try and flesh out outstanding issues. It was probably for many of our ANC counterparts the first time that they flew in government airplanes. It was also significant because it was the first time that we flew together in any <laughs> Airplane whatsoever. He's a guy who thinks people are supposed to give a damn for flying in an airplane for the first time, especially with them who've just killed so many people. He's laughing, he thinks it's some sort of funny joke. These are people who are supposed to be representing people who've been murdered, killed, maimed, raped, and we're supposed to believe that these guys are billionaires now because they 
they smart, fuck it. And they own everything, still own all the land. I'm supposed to believe that. Doing it in lodges where people were getting killed. They went to a remote game lodge. One of the ANC negotiators was Joe Slover, chairman of the Communist Party. The party had been allied with the ANC for decades. Slover was on the ANC's executive. He had supported the Soviet invasions of Czechoslovakia and Afghanistan. As chief of staff of the ANC's armed wing, he had sent guerrillas into action and made fiery funeral speeches. <laughs> Once and for all, those who are responsible for so much mourning, Slovo's reputation still sent shivers down the spines of government members at the conference. I went to the swimming pool and found a stranger in the swimming pool, and I wanted to walk away from it when I discovered that this was Joe Slovo. Slovo noticed me, and I had no option but to join him. Now that uh, I felt extremely uncomfortable about, because Joe Slovo, uh, the communist, the terrorist, what would my... Like father have said about this, a staunch policeman, terrorist hunter, his son in the swimming pool with this communist terrorist. But Slovo, now ill with cancer, had surprised everyone by revealing himself to be a pragmatist. Now these guys were always going to surprise you, mister, I'm with you guys, I'm white, I'll do this thing for you, I've got a fist up, fuck that shit. This guy lied, look, 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 look at who he's sitting with now. He didn't even talk to anybody that he's gonna do this. Now he's sitting with these twats. You know, what a big problem. So I can't believe it. They made negotiations and lied and sold everything out. Check this out. Writing in a party journal, he had proposed a compromise to break the deadlock. A sunset clause in the new constitution which would provide for compulsory power sharing for a fixed number of years. Compulsory power sharing? What type of compromise is that? Sharing with killers, murderers, you don't do that. What the f Playing games with our mother's lives and our dads, that's crazy, man. A sunset clause in the new constitution, which would provide for compulsory power sharing for a fixed number of years before fading out like the setting sun. At the Bush conference, the National Party showed interest. We used to go in for a degree of jollification in the evenings, spend a bit of time in the pub together at night, and obviously, uh, when you are negotiating with people uh, and you create that kind of social rapport, uh, things become easier and you get to know them, you get to understand. Uh, each individual a little better. They understand. They understand murderers now. Guys are still getting killed in all the townships all over Southern Africa. What the fuck? During the conference, tentative agreement was reached on arrangements for organizing a free and fair election. It was the beginning of the process that eventually led us to, uh, to an agreement and to a new constitution. So Joe Slovo has been very instrumental in advocating a system where we could uh, uh, remove uh, the fears of the minorities of the country and also moderate the arrogance of a majority, of a black majority. Moderate the arrogance of a black majority, so we are now arrogant because we want freedom. Listen to Nelson Mandela speaking about a white guy talking negotiation for our country. This is some madness. Formal negotiations began soon after in the World Trade Center near Johannesburg. The ANC and government agreed that the power-sharing coalition of major parties that would run the country would last for five years. Other parties had to accept. Other parties had to accept? What the fuck? They're doing this at the World Trade Center. I mean, that's some crazy shit right there. Who can get in there and be a part of these negotiations? Look at him president now allowing people to get taken over for the next five years. This is when these white guys are taking out money outside the country in the billions, okay? And we are sitting in the townships getting murdered. These guys are making deals. After five years, what happened? Nothing. Everybody 
still in Alexander Township, Soweto, Kylie Chalanga, the most bullshit of the most. What kind of operations were you doing? Well, to scan the start operations, we were involved in uh, coups taking over countries for other leaders. We were involved in Mozambique uh, spreading uh, the AIDS virus through medical conditions. We were involved in uh, Angola with the Dr. Jonas Avambi for various operations. We got military support. So people were killed during these operations? Oh, definitely. Really? Uh, you can, 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 can we no, I, I just do the question again and then you can pop in. Yeah. You mentioned actively sp spreading AIDS? There was a unit in my, uh, from Simon. No, listen to this. These motherfuckers, these killers, these Satanists, you know, they parade in Enrique, and Dutch reform, motherfucker, whatever. These guys are busy spreading AIDS, killing people during negotiations before and after. Negotiating for South Africa. Whose country is that? It looks like it's the Queen's country that these Afrikaner guys and English guys are busy, you know, fighting so hard for. So sad. So many people died in these negotiations and before just for this. Now listen to this. They go crazy, these guys. That uh, one of the things was that we went into African countries. And how was that done exactly? Through inoculation. Through vaccines? Yeah, through vaccines. Pretending to inoculate people and that type of thing. The idea, idea being to kill black people? Yeah, to eradicate black people. There, uh, you must understand the concept was that AIDS was a killer. It was incurable at that point in time. So it was led to believe that if infected people, it was the, it was the quick, non-militaristic um, approach to eliminate black people. And that is something you know for a fact that AIDS was actively being yes. spread to yes. other countries? Yes. To Africa. What it means is to African countries. So they were taking over South Africa and every other country in Africa. They didn't give a damn. You know, they killed even their own white brothers just to make sure they can have this huge control over Africa and its minerals and its people and its spirit. What the fuck? You don't do that as a dad, as a mom of kids. But that's crazy. What are they gonna think of you guys when, you know what I'm saying, when they grow up? So stop that shit, you know? That's crazy, you kill so many people just for power, just for power. I mean, that tall assassin guy, the Hendrik Vandenberg, fucking idiot. Look, look at his son. His son is a billionaire right now in South Africa. This guy's dad killed everybody, right? He, he created so many secret clandestine fucking situations that went into all townships and created a havoc. You know, Chris Hani, he was even angry that Chris Hani got killed in the daylight and everybody knew he wanted it to be done more clandestine. What a bitch. Right? Now look at them after Chris Hani is dead. Look at them sitting together, pitiful motherfuckers, talking shit to the whole country and the world, lying to everybody. You know, now white people think that they can just sit there, adopt black kids, and call them raped uh, products, you know? Uh, that they look after these kids and we, we don't do nothing as black people. This is, this is what we have given them now because of all this shit, you know? There's no respect for this, right? Look, look at this guy, still crying, right? That people don't give camaraderie to everything else. They give it to, to, to rugby and they don't give it, you know, he's crying and they don't give it to another black lady. Fuck that, what do you expect? He's from EFF, he's stupid and greened out. You know, he can't even believe what's happening. He knows so much information still now. These guys, is 2020, they're still talking shit. We want land, in fact, they're very quiet. 